Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome live here on your home of the Raiders, the WHS Network here on YouTube.com. Here with our 2024 IHSAA Class 2A uh, boys basketball semifinals preview show here this evening. Wanted to make sure and get uh, get on here and uh, give you guys the breakdown on the state championship game coming up here on Saturday, March the 30th of 2024 from Gainbridge Fieldhouse. Your Wapahani Raiders taking on the Brownstown Central Braves. Again, uh, as again as here as always, I'm your play-by-play uh, -play broadcaster, Brandon Morvillius, the man behind the camera. That is cameraman Jordan Redbeard McCoy. We want to thank you guys for tuning in here uh, here this evening. As uh, like I said, we uh, we take a look here at this um, uh, at both of these teams. Obviously, uh, it was a uh, a quite thrilling semi-state uh, here for Wapahani. You know, you could say the same thing here for Brownstown Central. Um, obviously claiming their victory there over Park Heritage uh, to uh, to move to the state championship game. Wapahani with the uh, with a victory over uh, the Fort Wayne Blackhawk Christian Braves. Uh, they're in a overtime game there. 60-49 to was the final score there in that one for, for Wapahani to claim victory in what was in all, in all honesty one of the uh, one of the best games that I I've ever seen. Um, it was just such a grueling matchup, uh, a lot of back and forth, uh, you know, and, and, and Wapahani had the, the lead late there in the end, um, and, you know, you had the layup there for uh, Fort Wayne Blackhawk Christian to tie it as we head then to overtime, and then, oh boy, it was the Isaac Andrews show there in, in overtime. Uh, Wapahani just did a great job getting him the basketball and making the right plays, um, you know, not necessarily always to Isaac, but to, to somebody else, and it was just a well-rounded effort uh, in which uh, Wapahani was able then to uh, to move on to the state championship for the very first time in school history. A lot has obviously been said about that. Uh, a lot has obviously went on in this uh, past uh, a little over a week now, and um, you know, going on two weeks, and it, it's truly uh, remarkable and quite special uh, to see how our community once again uh, comes together, uh, especially in a, in a you know very difficult time with uh, with the, with the storm and the tornado that went through Selma. Um, you know how the you know as a community we've really came together and this team I think has even brought us even closer and uh, it's been a great ride and uh, the journey will now move to Gamebridge Fieldhouse uh, so we're going to take a look here again only only a very small bracket here but this is what it looks like the Brownstown Central Braves taking on your Wapahoney Raiders again from Gamebridge Fieldhouse the home of the Indiana Pacers and Indiana Fever they're in uh, they're in downtown Indianapolis Indiana they're on March the 30th uh, so this coming Saturday uh, from uh, from Gamebridge right there, 12.45 uh, approximate start time for the 2A uh, state championship game. Brownstown Central uh, coming into the game at 27-4, and four, Wapahani at 26-2. Um, obviously, these both you know both these teams have had great years. They have a lot of stories uh, to kind of tell about them. You know, as far as um, you know, the group of young men that both these teams have that these teams rely a lot on uh, to to have the production uh, for the overall winning result and and the winning recipe for success uh, here for both these teams. And so we're going to kind of get right into things here with this. Uh, like I said, here with our preview show here tonight. Uh, we're not going to talk a lot about uh, Wapahoney as far as individual base because you guys know all about them. Uh, you know what they can do. Now, we will talk about some of the team stats and how they compare uh, with Brownstown Central here a little bit. So, Wapahoney uh, here on the season, they average 64 points a game. They allow 40.3. Uh, so we have a, a range margin there as far as um, from offense to defense of you know nearly 24 points, 23.7 to be exact, uh, which is the very best in the state of Indiana in all four classes. Uh, you know, so when you have that differential margin right there, especially on the plus side, and you know as far as from the winning side of things, says a lot about your team not only offensively but more importantly what we're doing here on the defensive side of the basketball. Um, rebounds a game were at uh, 25.9, assists at 14, uh, steals per game 7.5, and we turn it over at a rate of 5.7. Uh, field goal percentage here was 649 of 1,325, good for 49%. 
From beyond the three-point line, we are 278 of 672, good for 41 percent. And then from the charity stripe, we are 216 of 293, good for 74 percent. Uh, now, when you look here at Brownstown Central, um, from a, uh, an overall offensive standpoint, these guys can rack up the points. And obviously, you know, when you have a, a Jack Benter uh, on your team, that uh, that obviously helps matters. But the surrounding cast uh, really does an excellent job here. This is a high-octane offense that Brownstown Central has. Uh, so they average 69.1 points a game. They allow 46.9 uh, rebounds a game 30.6 they have a very tall order just like we've seen there from Fort Wayne Blackhawk Christian uh, a wide range of six foot six six foot five and six foot three guys uh, that uh, that really can uh, can make things a little bit more difficult uh, especially on the defensive end for any team but with Walt Pahani, what I've seen from them, I think that anything is possible from us. Uh, but uh, assists per game, they average uh, 17.8 assists. Uh, field goal percentage, they shoot uh, 50% from the field. They're 766 of 1,547. And then uh, three-pointers, uh, they're 40%, and they shoot 73% here from the free throw line. So uh, in all honesty, I mean, these two teams, uh, when I look at them on paper, uh, they pretty much are identical to one another. Um, you know, now aside from yes, Browntown Central does shoot uh, shoot very well, and and uh, you know they score the basketball five points. You know, essentially five points better than what Wapahani does. But you know, from a percentage standpoint, field goal percentage, three point percentage, and free throw percentage, um, you know, they're they're pretty much identical. Rebounds they have us uh, by right or about four rebounds extra uh, than what than what Wapahani gathers per game, but again, they're playing. You know they they have at least two, uh, I believe two or three six foot six guys, another two six foot five guys, and then a few other guys that are right around the six foot one to six foot three range. So. Again, they have a, t a pretty tall order uh, that uh, that they throw out there on the court every single ball game. Uh, so we're going to look now at some players to watch for here for the Braves. Uh, obviously, leading candidate right here is uh, six foot six, number fourteen, Jack Benter, uh, young man that's um, that's going to be going to Purdue next year. Uh, a very elite athlete and uh, is going to be a thorn in the side of Wapahani and, and all the other teams that they've played against throughout the course of the season. Uh, Benter averages 25.6 points a game, 7.4 rebounds, and 5.2 assists. Uh, he is uh, 231 of 420 from uh, field goals wise, 44% from downtown, and 83% uh, there from the free throw line, which is second on the team in that statistical category. Uh, so again, that is six foot six senior number fourteen, Jack Benter. Uh, next here we have a six foot one guard number ten, Parker Heyman. Uh, Eleven point six points a game, two point seven rebounds, and five point two assists. Uh, 119 of 275, 43 percent there from the field, uh, 41 percent there from downtown, and 87 percent from the free throw line. Again, that is uh, the the leading uh, percentage there for the team uh, statistically here for the Braves. Uh, next up here we have a six foot six forward here, number 34, Colby Hall. Colby uh, averages 10.6 uh, points a game, 6.8 rebounds, 2.3 assists. Uh, 130 of 224, good for 58% from the field, 21% uh, from downtown, and 71% from the free throw line. Uh, next, we have a six foot five uh, forward, number 33, Chase Coomer, uh, averages 8.5 points per game, a little over three rebounds a game. He's 92 of 224, good for 41% from the field, 40% from downtown, and 60% from the free throw line. Uh, next, we have six foot three uh, forward number 24, Micah Sheffer. Uh, 5.7 points per game, five or 4.8 rebounds. Uh, shoots 45% from the field, 44 of 97, 35% from beyond the arc, and 55% there from the free throw line. And then lastly, here we have uh, six foot five forward number 44, Adam Stahl. Uh, averages four and a half points a game, 3.9 rebounds. Uh, he is 50 of 78, good for 64% for there from the field. Uh, really doesn't take any threes, but he is 33% from beyond the three-point line, and he shoots 66% um, there from the free throw line. So 
those uh, right there are the six guys that I really keyed in on um, that I think that, that, at least in my personal opinion, make the biggest difference, especially statistically in what they're able to do out there on the floor. Um, you know, and sometimes it's the intangibles too. Um, you know, and, and we're going to go over some things here as far as what guys have the tendencies to do what um, and, and just really what to expect and what to, to watch for when it comes up here on, uh, on Saturday, March the 30th here for our uh, two-way state championship game. So uh, when, I, when I look here at Browntown Central, Brownstown is uh, very well disciplined. And, uh, you know, as I just mentioned a few minutes ago, uh, in a lot of ways, I believe that they're identical to us, you know, as far as our style of play and their style of play. And from watching them, I, I, I did watch uh, some video on them because originally I really couldn't find any stats on them. I ended up eventually getting uh, stats from the IHSAA um, because they didn't have anything on max preps. Um, and obviously I, I have a, a, you know, a little bit of uh, stats that I get from John Harrell. Um, and, and also big thanks there to Alexia Dobbs for helping out with this as well with getting stats. Um, but not a lot there. So I had to get some of these stats uh, from the IHSAA. But then I just went out and, and just like I did last week, uh, just watched video. Um, you know, took the time and, and broke down some things that Brownstown uh, has the uh, the tendency to do offensively and defensively, and um, and and what effect that can have that uh, on on throughout the course of the ball game here. So these guys, like I said, they're very well disciplined, high octane style of offense, but also a hard nose style of defense as well, which again, uh, I, in my opinion, kind of resembles what Wapahani does. Um, but again, um, you know, when you break these guys down individually here, Jack Benter, obviously a well-rounded player, um, shoots the ball very well with unlimited range, has the size, obviously six foot six uh, stature. Um, you know, he can shoot very well from beyond the three-point line, really unlimited range there, but can post up and, uh, and back down his defender and, and get some underneath shots there as well and finish at the rim. Rebounds it obviously very well there at 7.4 rebounds a game, so he utilizes his six foot six frame very well. And not to mention that he distributes the ball very well as well and, and, and you know, has great court vision and just overall knowledge of the game uh, that, like I said, makes him the elite player that he is. And so um, Wapahani's definitely going to have to have a swivel defensively as far as a swivel with the head, as far as making sure, you know, they always know where he's at. I would definitely look for Camden Bell uh, to see some time potentially guarding him. And I wouldn't even be surprised if you even see Eli Andrews, especially with the way Eli was able to defend uh, Kellen Pickett there in that semi-state championship game. Uh, I, I think that you at least, you know, definitely have to throw that idea out there, no doubt about that. At least that's just from my personal opinion. Um, and then uh, next we have uh, Colby Hall, very physical. He's number 34 for Brownstown Central, very physical on the inside. Um, you know, I mean, he does have a, a six foot six frame as well, so he utilizes his body well. He finishes at the rim. He can extend out a little bit, but not much of a three point threat whatsoever. He lives primarily on the inside, working the all four corners of the paint with you know with both low blocks and then the high post area there on the elbows. Tends to work a lot right there. Does do some pick and roll action, and will dive down to the basket. Um, and, and so, like I said, he's just very physical, very knowledgeable about the game, and very scrappy as well is uh, number 34, Colby Hall. Uh, next here we have a guard player here, six foot one, number 10, Parker Heyman, uh, another well-rounded player that's very quick, um, good ball handler, good footwork, um, just has a great view of the court, you know, as far as from a vision standpoint, um, is always looking to better his teammates. But, like I said, can also score the basketball. He averages 11.6 points a game, so he can get out there uh, and run with the best of them, put up shots, knock them down from outside, and, and have that aggressiveness and, and ability to finish at the rim as well. And rebounds the ball at a, at a fairly good rate there, nearly three rebounds a game. Just a well-rounded young man there is Parker Heyman. Uh, and, again, the best free throw shooter on this Brownstown team, so not somebody – that, you know, in crunch time, you don't want to see him at the free throw line. No doubt about that. Him or Benter, for that matter. Uh, next here we have um, Chase Coomer, uh, a six foot five forward here for, uh, here for the Braves. Um, you know, obviously has the height. 
Uh, but that young man can shoot. Uh, some of the games that I had watched, I had watched uh, the regional championship game against Sullivan. Um, there was, uh, I believe, one other game. I um, can't remember exactly who they played. Uh, it was some. It was one of the games in sectionals. But um, it was interesting to see, you know, how these guys get up and down the floor. And he's one of them. That you know, yes, he's tall, but he's lanky. He gets up and down the floor really well, and uh, and really can shoot the ball at a quite an excellent rate, especially along the wings and the corners. Uh, again, you know, the, with the Braves' high-powered offense and, and how they get up and down the floor really well, it's going to be extremely important for Wapahani to get, to get back in transition. And, you know, even if we make a basket, they're ready to run and gun again. Uh, you know, they're, they're looking to speed you up and, uh, you know, defensively and then on the offensive end as well, applying the pressure by getting up and down the floor, getting a, either an open layup or – hitting that outside uh, shooter there from the wing or the corner, and Coomer is usually the primary suspect uh, that gets up and down the floor that is able to do that with success. Um, so that is number 33, Chase Coomer. Again, uh, slips to the wing in a corner quite a bit, um, and, and that's definitely a young man that you do not want to see get hot um, and is very hard-nosed on the defensive side of the basketball, will get up in your grill and force some turnovers. Uh, next we have here number 24, Micah Sheffer. Um, not a huge scoring threat, but really reminds me of kind of like the, the Mason Barton type of deal. Uh, very scrappy, uh, will jump on loose balls, just will will do all the dirty work for you um, that maybe some other players might not necessarily want to do, but he always does it. Uh, Sheffer has a lot of success with that and, and, you know, getting loose balls, like I said, tracking down rebounds for second chance opportunities. Uh, he averages 4.8 rebounds a game. Like I said, not a huge score, but can when given the opportunity. Um, and, and so, just uh, another key uh, key part of, of uh, you know from the from a role standpoint here for the Braves and what these guys are able to accomplish. He's one of them that fulfills his role very very well, and that's why they've continued to have the success that they've had. And that's because of uh, of one Micah Sheffer. Uh, and then lastly here, again, Adam Stahl breaking him down. Um, stays around the rim, not a three-point shooter. Uh, but, you know, obviously he, he rebounds the ball well. He's six foot five, um, but stays, again, in the parameters there of the paint area. Works the high and low post. You know, you'll see him set some screens uh, here every once in a while, but is looking for, um, you know, post feed down low or, being able to rebound and put it back in there with second chance opportunities. I've seen that quite a bit uh, there in, in some game footage that I had watched. Just kind of hangs out. You know, he's not one that's going to necessarily uh, look to attract attention. I mean, you know, yeah, he's a he's a tall young man, so that in within itself will attract attention. But he's kind of silent, you know, and, and uh, kind of does his own thing, you know, defends the ball very well, uh, defends the post very well, and rebounds and, and is able to finish there underneath. So, uh, it's just, just uh, you know, I mean, the reason they're 27-4, and four, like I said, they're just a very well-rounded group, no matter who you have out there. And there's even some other guys that I didn't mention that, again, they're role players. They'll come in, they'll do what's asked of them, and that's why they're so good and well-rounded is because it, they really don't have a letdown whatsoever, uh, no matter who's out there on the court. You know, even if Benter comes off the court, that's not a huge problem for them because they still have other shooters. They have other distributors, other um, playmakers that can find ways to get the job done even if he's not out there. So you've got to be aware of of, uh, of all of these guys and make sure to, to keep them in check as best as you possibly can, which then goes right into uh, to our keys here for Saturday for Wapahani. Obviously, this is it. You know, This is the last game of the season no matter what happens. Um, got to leave it all out there. They know that. These guys have uh, have played outstanding all year long. They've been a lot of fun to watch. And be a, you know being a part of this journey with them you know, throughout the course of the season, you know, we're, we start all the way back in the middle to the latter part of November, and here we are to end of March. And the very first time in school history, we're in a state championship for boys basketball. These guys have a, have had a, a lot of accomplishments. 
but we've got one more to get. Uh, so this isn't, you know, the end of the road essentially as far as from a winning standpoint because we have one more win to gather, and it's going to be a tough one. There's no doubt about that. But some keys for Wapahani. Uh, again, it's pretty much about the same as what it always is, but you got to start off with the defense. The defensive pressure, um, from what I've seen, you know, even in the Sullivan game that I'd watched, Sullivan applied a little bit of a pressure, and, uh, you, know, they, you know, this is a team that does take care of the ball fairly well. But, you know, if you really start to apply pressure to them, sometimes, you know, they're, you know, you can see them get flustered and they will turn it over. Uh, you know, they can be careless with the basketball. But you're never going to know that if, if you don't apply the pressure. So Wampahani has got to maintain that, that hard-nosed, grueling, um, just stifling defense that we're able to bring out there every single ball game. We've got to have that. We've got to bring our A game coming up on Saturday. Uh, we can't leave any stone unturned. You know, you got to leave it all out there. One game, one opportunity uh, for one title, and uh, and you want to be number one at the end of this. Because really, in all honesty, the rankings and all that stuff, at least in my opinion, that is what it is coming into the game. I really don't put too much stock into things. Um, you know, I know that, you know, there was a couple times throughout the season where we were number one, uh, you know, then we dropped down to three or four, then back up to two. This is a battle between number one, Brownstown, number two, Wapahani. I really don't care what number they have. At the end of the day, it only matters who is left standing at the end with the title and the trophy in hand. Uh, but I, I think it does say a lot, though, either way for both of these teams uh, about the accomplishments that they had throughout the course of the year. And so either way, um, you know, you're going to get a great ball game. There's no doubt about that. But defensively for Wapahani, we've got to bring it. We've got to collect the turnovers, get the deflections, just be disruptive and frustrate them offensively and get them off of their game. Um, no second chance opportunities. We've got to rebound the ball very, very well. We've got to limit extra opportunities for them because, again, this is a good rebounding team, a very, very good rebounding team that, again, really feasts off of these second chance opportunities and be able to put it back in. Um, and, and so that's one area that Wapahani's got to really hamper down on when it comes to Saturday afternoon. Um, and then, like I said, then on the flip side of things as well, we've got to get those second chance opportunities on offense. Uh, you know, shot goes up, we've got to crash the boards. You know, we're we're looking to rebound the basketball and put it right back in. Um, so we've got to take advantage of every extra opportunity we possibly have. Offensively. Again, clicking on all cylinders, you know, these these guys that fulfill their roles. You know, yes, I understand, you know, Isaac Andrews and, and what he's able to do. But Camden Bell, Nate Luce, Nick Cook, Mason Barton, Eli Andrews, uh, you know, Logan Wolf, Brock Zitgraff, you know, all these guys, whether if they play or if they're on the bench, they have a role. Uh, and, and they know that role, and they're able to execute it to the highest capabilities possible, and that is the reason why we are 26-2. and two. Uh, A lot of fun to watch, but they know what they have to do on the offensive and defensive side of the basketball to be effective. Uh, offensively, we've got to be aggressive. We've got to go to the rim. Uh, pick up some fouls on these guys, you know, especially these tall guys. You want to get them out of the game as quick as possible. You want to throw them off of their game as much as possible. Uh, so be in attack mode. Hopefully it will open up some opportunities from the outside. Uh, from a defensive standpoint, you know, when you look at Brownstown Central, they do play some man-to-man, but they also look to play uh, some 1-3-1 one, one and look in a trap. Um, meaning you have one guy on top, and it's a lot like what Wapahani will do sometimes throughout the course of ball games. Have your man up top, three in the middle, and then one back. So pretty much one out there on the top of the key or just extended between that and the, and the volleyball line. And then you have your three right across the free throw line or thereabouts, you know, pretty close to that. And then your one pretty much right underneath the rim. Um, and, and they do like to trap the ball along the sidelines in the corner. They will look to force you to turn the ball over every single time down. They have the high inability overall athletically to be able to do that and, and to be able to fill in the gaps as well. You know, so when they go to, to trap you, 
it's it's the help the helper type of situation where these guys fill in nicely they know what they have to do and they they're able to do it to to a successful rate to where again you know they're 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 getting the turnovers and then they're running back down quickly on the offensive end and putting it in for either two or three every single time it seems like and so we've got to be aware we've got to take good care of the basketball play our style of game but also make sure uh, you, you don't want to feed right into their hands here a little bit as well. You've got to make sure that we're aggressive, take good care of the basketball, uh, play the game the right way, and continue to play the game together the, the way we have all season long. And then lastly, free throws and uh, maintaining our identity. Um, you know, I say that all the time. Free throw is so important. We've seen that in, uh, in the, uh, the semi-state championship game. Um, you know how important it was down the stretch that we made our free throws. I don't care if it's the first quarter, the fourth quarter, everything in between. Heck, I don't care if it's overtime or second overtime or what time it is. We've got to make sure and take good care of the opportunities that we have in front of us. If we have a free throw chance, we've got to execute on it. Uh, we can't leave free points out there because every game, especially in a game like this, uh, it could come down to the very end, and uh, you know that can dictate whether you win or lose a ball game. And so, uh, free throws extremely important. We shot the ball very well from the free throw line early on this season. We've got to get that back, uh, and 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 you know, and we've got to play. Uh, you know, as far as when we shoot our free throws at any point in time of the game, we've got to act like and pretend that it's under a minute left in the ball game and we need some points. That's about the situation you have to be thinking with every single time you're at the charity stripe because we've got to take full advantage, like I said, when the opportunities present themselves. Uh, and like I said, with maintaining identity, um, this is a team that has been always unselfish. Um, they, they play the game the right way. They play hard. They play for one another. They're not looking to, to bolster... Uh, you know, an individual stat, we're looking to get a win. That's all that matters. It doesn't make a difference if, you know, if Isaac goes out and scores 30 points or or if Camden, you know, if he goes out and scores 25 or 30, you know, we're looking to find a way to get the job done no matter how we've got to do it. But we're looking to help benefit one another. And just such an unselfish group that's just so much fun to watch. And we get to watch him one more time. And uh, that's going to be down at Gamebridge Fieldhouse here on March the 30th, coming up on Saturday, 1245 start time. Your Wapahani Raiders are the home team. Brownstown Central is the visiting team. 27-4 and four is Brownstown Central. Wapahani, 26-2. and two. Please, please, please come on down to Gamebridge Fieldhouse. We want you guys down there. Uh, we, we've got to pack that place. I mean, I think the, the, the venue holds like 17,000. Heck, let's go ahead and get at least five or six thousand there. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, as many as we possibly can. We're we're we're, uh, we're wearing black, but if you got some red, go ahead and throw that on too. I don't care, uh, but just be there, be there supporting the team and rooting them on to victory. Because I tell you what, we're going to need you guys there. Uh, the team's going to need you guys there, backing them, supporting them, giving them the strength and the energy that they will need, especially in crunch time when they desperately need it the most. Um, and, and they feed off of that. I know they do. And, and so um, please make sure to join us there coming up on Saturday. Uh, again, uh, you've seen down there on scrolling at the bottom of your screen a few times already, probably a couple dozen times already. Um, but where you can listen to our broadcast coming up there on Saturday, you can watch us at uh, https semicolon two slashes www.ihsaatv.org slash Wapahoney Raiders slash. That's where you can listen to me talk. Uh, I'm going to have the, the, the graphics thrown on there, the scoreboard, all that stuff, or on the commercials. There will not be any video, so uh, let me let me uh, let me put that out there again. No video from us on, here on the WHS Network. The IHSAA has exclusive video rights for semi-state and for the state championship. Um, so if you want to watch the game, go to the IHSAATV.org. Again, those uh, those links will be here scrolling on the bottom of the screen here in just a second again. Um, but our broadcast is free. There's no cost whatsoever we would 
We'd love to have you at the game. If you can't make it, though, you can listen to me uh, talk and, and throw the oh, heck yes, and rainmakers and uh, from other area codes from Isaac Andrews and everything in between. We're going to have a great time. We're looking forward to a W on, on coming up on Saturday and uh, the, the first ever state championship victory here for your Wapahani Raider boys basketball team. Uh, and uh, I'm already pumped and excited and ready to go. I wish it was Saturday already. Uh, but uh, we welcome you guys again to, to Gamebridge Fieldhouse. Please come on down, uh, Wapahani and Brownstown Central, 1245 p.m. there on Saturday afternoon. Again, we want to thank you guys uh, for tuning in here for this evening's 2024 IHSAA Class 2A Boys Basketball State Finals Preview Show. Hopefully uh, hopefully, I was able to break the, the, the Braves down a little bit there for all of you fine folks to be able to just kind of kick back, relax, and also gain a little knowledge about these guys and what they're able to do and and uh, the success that they've had. But all this, all the success that we've had as well, and, and look forward to Saturday's ball game. Uh, but again, uh, we appreciate the support all season long. One more to go, folks. One more to go. A championship to get. We'll see you guys down at Gamebridge Fieldhouse on Saturday. Until then, I'm Brandon Morvillius alongside cameraman Jordan Redbeard McCoy. We'll see you all next time right here on your home of the Raiders, the WHS Network. <laughs>